Hey, what's going on, guys? It's David here from Gen Zio. We are in Denver, Colorado for ETH Denver. I'm with Itai from Dynamic. We just wrapped up a fantastic interview. We spoke about Dynamic, um, what they're building, MPC, his perspective on stable coins, you know, purchasing a wallet for maybe a newborn, you know, getting them ready for the future. The fact that he doesn't like Reese's, but I do. I hope you guys enjoy the interview and I look forward to hearing your response. Hey, what's going on guys? It's David here from Genzio. We're in Denver, Colorado for ETH Denver. I am here with Itai from Dynamic. Hey everyone. Itai, I would say it's nice to meet you, but yeah, we've, we've already met. Already met. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. In a cooler city. I like Denver, but in a cooler city in Bangkok. Please. Bangkok is cool, man. It is yeah, cool. it is cool. Um, now, how, how's ETH Denver been for you? It's been awesome. Uh, I am exhausted, uh, as I'm sure everyone, yeah. as, as you are as well, but it's been really great. It's been, um, we feel like, we, this is our third year also having a booth in East Denver, and every year the percent of people that show up that know what Dynamic does is higher, mm -hmm. which I think is good progress. So it's been really effective. We got to meet really good folks. It's been good. Okay, man. Cool, cool. How many times have you been to Denver just in general to hang out? Uh, in general, I've been here probably 10, 15 times. Okay. It's a fun spot. It's a fun spot. I always miss going skiing after this. So I don't, I'm not going skiing this year, which is very sad. But uh, it's a cool spot, besides the airport being 45 minutes away. It's true. But actually, you know, I don't know if you went to Korea. But it yeah. seems because Korea is so far away. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From the airport. This seems a little bit close. That's true. In comparison. That's true. There's also, I heard there's like a, like a rumor about an underground, like nuclear bunker or something yeah. under the airport. I don't know if that's true, but... I, Might be for the elite, but... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe we're not invited. Yeah. Well, not yet, at least. Not yet. One yeah, day. One yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. Um, they actually have one of those in Las Vegas. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, it's for Teslas. It's Interesting. The Tesla okay. tunnels. Oh, cool, cool. Those now, I may be wrong. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if they're specifically Tesla tunnels, but um, we recently went to CES, and we totally got to experience the tunnels oh, nice. in Vegas. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. You drove a Tesla through there? I didn't personally drive it. There's a driver. So you, okay, can cool, get, cool. you go downstairs, you get in the, uh, you, you know, you, you pick your destination by standing in a certain bay. Oh, nice. Downstairs. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And they go in different directions. And you can get, I mean, because Vegas is like, you know, I mean, I don't know if you've been to Vegas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, like, maybe sometimes it's difficult to cross the street or get, you know, to want, maybe you got to get somewhere real quick. Hop in the Tesla. It goes, oh, nice. goes pretty quick. So it's uh, quite convenient. That's awesome. Okay. I'll yeah. try that out next time. Nice, man. And um, so let's get to it. I know you guys got a lot of new stuff yeah. going on from since last time we talked. Yeah. So here we are now. Yeah. And uh, we'd love to hear about it. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, one thing I, I can share a little bit more about is something that we announced this week called MPC Embedded Wallets. Uh, I can share a little bit more about that. The very short version for those that don't know, first, what Dynamic does, we essentially um, do everything that has to do with kind of interacting with wallets, right? So if you're a developer and you're building a crypto type experience, uh -huh. you need a wallet, right? The wallet is, is the way you interact with the blockchain. That can be an external wallet, like a MetaMask or a Phantom, or that can be an internal wallet, like a login with email or a Google, and then we generate a wallet in the background. Now, it's pretty seamless. So if someone goes into a site that's used by a developer that leverages dynamic, they log in just like they would to a Google or anything like that, and they get a wallet in the background. They don't know about it. But wallets secure money, and so we spend a lot of our time thinking about, okay, what is the best route to secure that wallet. Uh, we used to use one technology called trusted execution environments, and now we essentially introduced what I'm about to in a second go into detail on, which is hmm. uh, uh, what's called an MPC wallet. It's a, it's a different tech for securing these keys. Yeah. Uh, I can, uh, maybe I can explain a little bit more about what MPC is, yep. and then which might be irrelevant, and then we can dive in. But, but really, um, crypto is based on this very simple structure again which is wallets and wallets are really inherently what's called a private key a secret that i know and a public key a secret that a thing that i can share right so when you want to send me money i give you my pri uh, public key or a part of it you send that money i get that and only i can unlock that money with my private key right so i have a private key we see this a lot if you have ever generated a metamask wallet or a phantom wallet uh -huh. you got a seed phrase that is a private. That is a private key. That is a, a, a mnemonic phrase that unlocks your wallet, right? So you have to secure that, right? So if you generate a MetaMask wallet, they give you the seed phrase. You have to store it. You have to write it offline. And if you lose it, you're pretty much done, right? Uh, the name of the game is how do you secure that private key? Yeah. Now, there are multiple technologies to do that, but the best one is essentially not having a private key at all, 
right? And that's where MPC comes in. MPC is essentially is this tech that allows us to split or, or not really split given the key doesn't exist, but create multiple shares or multiple parts of a key. You own one as a user, I own the other as dynamic. And only when we coordinate and collaborate can we sign a message and sign on behalf of the private key. But you do it in a way where I don't know your part and you don't know my part. And so only by working together can, can something happen. So if you get hacked, private key isn't stolen because they don't know my part. If I get hacked, private key isn't stolen because they don't know your part. So it's this really fancy tech. It has a bunch of like magic math, I would call it, uh -huh. um, that lets you secure assets and secure private keys. Okay, okay. Now, what does NPC stand for? It stands, it stands for multi-party computation. So the actual name is actually even longer just to make it more complex, uh, you know, and uh, bore uh, everyone out of existence. Uh, but it's really, the full name is what's called TSS NPC. So Threshold Signature Multi-Party Computation. That stands for two things. Multi-party computation means that me and you collaborate uh, and potentially one more person in order to compute something, right? Threshold signature means that um, how, what percent of people in, in the collaboration have to be there in order for something to work. So let's say you get a share of a key, I get a share of a key, someone else gets a share of a key. Threshold signature says, well, only two of us are required. Wow. So I sign, you sign, uh, and that's enough. The third person doesn't have to do it. So it's this really fancy kind of combination of two things, of threshold signatures, of kind of what percent, a two, and we call this in, in, on the technical side, a two out of two. So two users out of two shares, two out of three, two users out of three shares, three out of five, etc. But at the very basic level, it's like dictates what percent uh, of folks need to participate in this multi-party computation, which is MPC. Okay. Yeah. Very technical, I know, very like low level stuff. The, the actual why this all matters is just, if you created a wallet, uh, it can have money and it needs to be super secure and you should not really care about it, but you should just sleep well at night. And it's our responsibility to actually help you secure that those assets and that's where this tech comes in. So very exciting for us. Uh -huh. I really hope no one else gets like cares about this in a year or two or three. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nice, man. Nice. Now I know we wanted to touch a little bit on stable coins. Yeah. 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 Now, go ahead. Yeah. So uh, what we've seen. So again, dynamic generates wallets for folks, right? When I want to transfer money from one side to the o of the ocean to another mm -hmm. through crypto, through Solana, or through Base, or through whatever. I need wallets on both sides, yeah. right? So we see a lot of these use cases of stablecoin money transfer, right? And some of the use cases we're star starting to see a lot of is kind of the global version of Venmo, right? So I, today in Venmo, I can transfer money or PayPal, I can, uh, PayPal is global, but with Venmo, I can transfer money within the US. Uh -huh. But if I want to send money to my sister in Israel, I really can't do that, right? Um, we're starting to see startups that let me do that by essentially having my app here, my sister having her app in Israel, and using crypto rails and a wallet here and a wallet there, transferring money, right? It doesn't have to be Ethereum, it can be stable coins, mm -hmm. right? So it's about me paying back for dinner or whatever, or for a present that she bought on my behalf for my dad, uh -huh. um, who ironically has a birthday today. Uh, happy birthday, dad. Thank you, happy birthday, dad. Um, so great. If we got nothing else away from this podcast, happy birthday. Uh, the, the, um, the, the, the cool thing is, is that we're starting to see these, these use cases where wallets fit in, right? And so we're starting to hear web two companies that don't care about crypto, just saying, Hey, this is a more efficient way for me to move money globally. Yep. Right. I, um, and, and then you start seeing this second order effect, which is I am in Turkey right? Wow. There's high inflation. Uh, I don't necessarily trust the banks. So I want to keep my money in dollars, right? So if someone pays me from the US, I can get that money in stable coins, keep that in a wallet in the stable coin and get exposure to treasuries, right? Get exposure, exposure to the US market, buy real estate, yeah. right? So there's a lot of these really interesting use cases that crypto all of a sudden opens up and we were fortunate to see those early on. Mm -hmm. No, it definitely has been a topic of discussion um, 
at ETH Denver, specifically for me, right, as Gen CEO as a whole is moving forward, we're growing, we're saying, hey, we need to take on different avenues as well. Yeah. And um, it goes right, it ties right into what you're saying. Projects from Web2 yeah. are starting to realize, hey, probably necessary to take on some traits. Exactly. Web3. Exactly. And, you know, us personally, we see ourselves as, one, we can, I mean, marketing and media, right? We can do that, yes or yes, yeah. for a project. But also, we can be a bridge for these projects to get their foot in the door in Web3. 100%. And, you know, kind of, you know, take take a project that's in Web2, introduce them to Dynamic, yeah. for example. Yeah, yeah. Um, sure. And become a bridge. So it's definitely something that's inevitable. And it's either, it's a matter of time when they want to um, get accustomed to yeah. what's coming. Yeah, I 100% agree. And I... I our, we're, we're really a, a, a complexity abstraction company. Yeah. Right. And we're in the business of removing as many crypto terms from your life as possible. Okay. Right. So everything we talked about, TSS, MPC, I really hope besides like the five people listening that get, get excited about math, no one else should really care. Right. They should care about the, the result, which is you can use these crypto rails without really caring about crypto and you can do it in a really secure way. Yeah. Right. And that's what we're trying to optimize for. I really hope that in two, three, five years, run of the mill developers can just implement crypto rails without really caring about this, just like they implement Stripe and they don't know anything about how ACH works yep. or they implement Plaid and they don't know anything about how banking works. Exactly. Yeah. And and that's also another thing that we've been discussing like so much with everybody that's really came here is like, you know, one thing I see from a from an outside perspective, looking on builders, right, like yourself, I mean, it's like, we want to get to a point where um, people like, you know, your father, also yeah. happy birthday again, happy birthday again, um, or my mother or my father, right, they can use blockchain without knowing that they're using that's right. blockchain, that's right, exactly right. just kind of like, almost like traditional finance. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. That if we kind of say that the next crypto app you're probably, or my dad or your parents will yeah. interact with, is likely a current app that they already have on their phone that all of a sudden enables crypto. Yeah. So that is much more likely than them downloading a crypto app. Yeah. Right? It's just about enabling what they currently do in a better way. Uh huh. Right? I mean, and I see it firsthand, right? Like I see people playing games on their phone and they yeah. don't even know that they're. It, that's collecting exactly tokens, right. right. That's exactly right. So I think right. that that's, that's like the first step, right? Or yeah. maybe not the first step, but a simple step, right, towards yeah. what is coming, right? People that's are exactly playing right. games, collecting tokens, yes. earning rewards. And I mean, it, it's like, you know, I hate to shout out Starbucks, but I'm not shouting them out because I'm a Sonics fan from Seattle. But, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but I mean, like now Starbucks is starting to do something on blockchain. Yeah. You have Walmart, you know, yeah, yeah. Walmart, and it's like Costco, Walmart. Yeah, yeah, McDonald's, That's like exactly right. I it, mean, it's coming. Exactly right. We see a bunch of payment companies thinking about both how to accept crypto as payment and then use crypto in the background for moving money. Yeah, or selling. Yeah, and one of our good friends, Black Opal, um, okay. a group, right? They are a uh, international, luxurious, you know, travel experience concierge, if you will. And yeah. now they are deciding, hey, we need to become crypto friendly. Yeah, because. We know it's coming. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. There's always the use case of buying a Rolex with crypto. Yeah. Right? That's that would always exist. But I'm with you. I, I think it's the the crypto saying crypto is sort of like saying I work at the internet. Right. Yeah. It's, it's not it's like a bunch of things. Right. So I really hope that if you fast forward a few years, they're no longer crypto conferences, just like fintech conferences or just regular run of the mill conferences, and each one has its own Folks that leverage crypto technology to accomplish things in a better way. Okay. Yeah. Lovely, man. Lovely. Now, outside of MPC, is there anything else new about Dynamic that you'd like to share? Yeah. So, um, the the our focus is again abstracting away as much of this complexity. Yeah. Right. So, one more place where we're spending our time is is what we call on ramps and off ramps. Okay. Right. So, essentially, at the very basic level, it literally just means. I've created a wallet for someone. How do I get money into that wallet and out of that wallet? And so for folks kind of that are interested, they can go to our site and start playing around with all the different ways, credit card, debit card, ACH, external wallets, et cetera, that you can get money into a wallet or out of a wallet. We're gonna spend a lot more time there so that again, the next Venmo that's being built or the next kind of you know Shopify that's being built can use these rails, but folks can still use their credit card or debit uh, debit card to pay on the other side of the world with very low fees in a very quick way. Right, so that's another place where we're spending a lot of our time. Okay, nice, yeah. man, nice. 
Um, you know, I think, you know, last time we spoke in Thailand, um, you know, we touched on history of dynamic, yeah. how dynamic the name is in itself. Yeah. Um, but I want to kind of ask what, again, you know, what have been some hurdles we've had to face, right? Yeah. Obviously the market is volatile, yeah. um, and it, you know, depending on the route you want to go. And I want to know, like, how have you guys been able to, um, kind of go about that? Yeah. So I, I think we, we actually don't pay attention to the market that much. Yeah. Um, in the sense that we think about crypto on the technology side, if you were to ask me right now what the price of Ethereum is, I, for the life of me, I couldn't tell you. I, I don't know. I don't care. It's not my focus, right? We very much focus on the technology side. Okay. That has seen continuous growth, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we're, a place where we'll need to work together as an industry is I think regulations are still a little bit unclear. As an example, for stablecoin to stablecoin, there's at least uh, a few countries. I think India is one of them, if I recall correctly. I hope I'm not butchering this. Where you still pay 1% in fees on stablecoin to uh, to local currency conversion, which is weird because it's just paying it just a fee on because it uses crypto, right? So we need to start solving these types of things in order to start really getting things like global payments up and running at scale. So I, I as an industry, some of the challenges we have faced is really just clarity around regulation. I think there are a lot of very good actors in the space that just want to follow regulation, just want to do right. Uh, as a good example, FinCEN uh, has a 2019 regulation around non-custody that specifically mentions MPC, right? So that's a very good indication for us that, hey, this is a good route that we're going because it aligns with regulation, right? So just continuous clarity solves so many problems for folks, uh, helps build awesome businesses. Okay. Now, one thing I, uh, you know, I want to do is, for example, I have a niece and a nephew. Okay. And I'd love to hear about your opinion on this. How important do you think it is for me to like, let's say for their birthday, yeah. rather than get them candy or get them a, get them yeah. a, a gift that they might break or outgrow yeah. or anything, how important is it to start a wallet for them? I, I think, look, I, I think about it in, in the sense, even outside crypto of, of uh, the, the one free lunch in finance is like uh, uh, compounding, right? Like compounding is like the magical part of finance, right? So inherently, regardless of whether it's crypto or not, I'm very much for the putting money aside for, I have two kids, uh, putting money aside for kids and just letting it grow, right? That is yeah. a gift that continues giving, right? They'll be significantly happier at age 18 discovering that they have a bunch of crypto versus uh you know the marginal value of the candy right and so um although candy is cool but uh <laughs> you, you know um sweets or chocolate i i'm a i just do chocolate i'm, I, a, I'm with like, you like i the other is too much complexity yeah. like, like that reese's is interesting but besides wow that, Re reese's is my fave okay fair enough, fair and, enough. I, and i live in spain and there are no reese's there oh that's a problem i always bring them back you should pivot to an import business <laughs> yeah that's uh, maybe the next thing. Yeah. Uh, but to your point, like, so I think about it more, more as a compounding, do I think asset classes grow over time? In general, yes, unrelated to crypto, right? So uh, compounding is just like a magical thing. Uh, so whether it's putting money in S&P 500 or putting money in crypto it just, and just forgetting about it. Yeah. That's, I think, I, I, you know, I like that approach. Again, to each his own. You know, not financial advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool, man. Well, I hope you have a phenomenal rest of your time in Denver, and I hope this trip goes fantastic for you. I know we will be seeing you at many more events, probably be doing more interviews as well. Fair enough. Maybe with someone else from the team as well. Um, you know, I know you shouted out before, but where can we follow you guys? Yeah, absolutely. So first, thank you again for having us. No, uh, no, these are you. always uh, like a blast of, of conversation. So I, I appreciate the time. Uh, where to find us? You can find us on www.dynamic.xyz. You can look at our docs on docs.dynamic.xyz. Follow, uh, follow us on Twitter, dynamic underscore XYZ. You can yell from the rooftops. We might show up. Uh, and uh, that's pretty much it. Those are the ways to uh, find us. Cool, man. Very cool. Thank Pleasure you so much. Again. Thank Thanks. you. Brought to you by Hedera and Foresight Ventures. Hey, what's up? If you want to survive, you got to build a house. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back at the Gen Z Nuclear House. Oswald, thanks so much for joining us today.